Thanks, Ross. Um, those will be running um, before long, as soon as everything is, is, is all orchestrated to have everything uh, official. With the, we have filed everything with the Secretary of State's office. We're just waiting for everything to come back. And as soon as that's all in place, um, you will see those ads running in the uh, Dayton market. Okay. Any questions from anybody? We would be. S yes, sir. It's your province with the Toledo Blade. Yes, Can you give us an idea of what your relationship, this organization's relationship, is going to be with the Ohio Right to Life? You know, we have found, just through working on this bill, that there's just been a, an absolute need for leadership. And so we've stepped up to do that. We welcome them to come on board with this, just like we welcome every other organization across the state. We have um, traditionally, and in this entire season, when they have been introducing uh, legislation, have been totally supporting all of their legislation, and we hope that they will be on board um, as well. Yes, sir. Uh, Bill Bershey, why are you starting the Dayton market? Well, you know, the Dayton market is, um, is a pretty critical one, as you know. Um, and we have Senator Lehner there. Um, who said, by the way, that she will support the bill if it comes to the floor of the Senate in the same format that it came to the House. So um, we're hoping she's a powerful lady, and so is, is Senator Jones. Um, it's also near Senator Niehaus's district. So um, it's, it's targeted towards them because they're going to have a lot to say with web, about whether or not this, this gets to the committee. So we're excited about it, though, because I think an awful lot of people in the area will be moved to contact them and just encourage them to please get it out there. When you're thinking, you know, 70, 70 babies every day, a whole busload of children, you know, the delay, the delay is just costing, costing us too many lives. So we're hoping people will make contacts. Yes? The National Right to Life movement is going to announce today that they're going to try this informed consent push in all 50 states. Is that a bill you guys would support? This is, this would... This is Michelle Bachman's bill, right. correct? Yeah, but actually, Michelle Bachman um, was one of the first ones to come on to support the Ohio, the Ohio heartbeat bill as well. Um, things are a little different on the federal level. I'm sure she's well aware that it would be difficult to get it through the Senate right now to do what we're doing in Ohio. Um, and so she took the informed consent portion of it, which is good, which is very good, and we will support it as well. But it's basically informed consent. If the, if the mother um, hears the baby's heartbeat, that's a very good thing. But then she still, according to their bill, will have the option to choose to have the abortion or not. Our bill, of course, will say if the baby's heartbeat is, is detected, the baby will be protected. So there's a difference in the bills. I don't want there to be any confusion, but we are definitely supportive of that bill as well. You know, there's a lot going on in the fall, and we, we certainly understand that. You, you know, we have got filing dates coming up here in, in December, and we've got the election in November. And, and the Senate is generally not in session too much during this time anyway. I mean, so we do understand that, and that's part, that's part of the situation, I think. Um, and he, frankly, has wanted us to try and work as closely as we can with all of the pro-life organizations, which we have done. Um, if there's one or two out there that are not supporting that, or, or not supporting this effort, that is certainly not because we have not made the effort to bring them all in. So I, I think as you can see, we've got the vast majority of people from across the state now, and I think, I think that, um, that our Senate President will be able to see that with this new organization. He's mentioned that he's going to get some state lawmakers together to look at some of the legal issues that Ohio Right to Life has raised and before bringing this to the floor. Are, are you aware of, of those comments? Yes, you know what, we have had, we have had those discussions as well. Um, however, if you look at everything that was done in the House, we vetted this so much in the House. We sat down and met with every attorney we could get our hands on. Um, anybody who knew anything about pro-life legislation was a part of um, putting the bill together on the House side. And we spent a long time making sure that it was just right before the Speaker put his name on it to support it in the House. As all of you know, we were a little, a little nervous thinking, oh, please, get this through the House. Come on, Mr. Speaker, what are you doing? But as it turned out, um, Mr. Speaker just wanted to make sure that it was the best bill, and it absolutely is. So we've done all that. We've done all that homework in the House, and frankly, we just don't want to keep going over and over the same things when we know that this is the bill that, that we want to put through in the Senate. Yes? How long do you expect that ad to run in Dayton and then are there 
there will be some plans to do some other things after that, but we're going to get started in the Dayton market. Not sure exactly how long they're going to run down there. Um, we're, we're still working on that. Okay. And are you fundraising money for these types of ads? Are you doing yes, that? we are just starting to do that. We are just starting to do that now. Just to follow up what you said about the betting you did in the House, the Ohio Right to Life leaders continue to say that they're concerned that this might backfire, that it would just reinforce the right to an abortion through an, another U.S. Supreme Court decision. You don't agree with that. You know what, Mr. Hershey? No, we don't. <laughs> we don't. We feel that we have absolutely nothing to lose. I mean... What is there to lose when we start moving the ball down the field in the right direction? If they stop us a little ways, we'll just keep moving and keep moving. It's sort of the pounding on the door, keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. And so, you know, that's our intention is to, you know, just, just keep moving this because eventually, eventually, the Supreme Court is going to need to look at something different than they've seen before. Uh, we can understand, and we've talked about this, we can understand the difference in strategies that different organizations would use. But our strategy is not to go with something that is so absolutely certain to be ruled constitutional that we don't give the we don't give the Supreme Court a chance to upgrade their decision. So I think it was David Forte who said um, in the compilation of information when we were putting this bill together, he said, the Supreme Court never changes their mind unless they're invited to. So this this Ohio pro-life um, heartbeat bill is meant to extend that um, engraved invitation to the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn Roe. Yeah. To be clear, this bill has no exception to that, right? Like, well, this, this, this bill really doesn't need too many exceptions because it starts when the baby's heart begins to beat. So we don't have to worry about the rape and incest exceptions. It does have a health exception for the mom. It's got the same language in it that we had, that Ohio Right to Life had in their post-viability bill. So we know that that is constitutional. You know, we're, we're good with that. We're good with that. Do you have any plans to go around the Senate, go to the ballot if you can't get a vote? I mean, if you have this many supporters, do you plan to have that network to, you know, connect to so many voters? You know, that's always, that's always a consideration. Um, however, we have come so far with the Ohio House and have gotten so far in the legislature here, and we know that we have the votes in the Senate. So it's our strategy to keep moving on the senators to get them to bring this to the committee and then onto the full floor. Is this a nonprofit organization that you created? Absolutely. 501c4. And any plans to create a PAC at some point so that you can become directly involved in campaigning? Well, you know, according to the, is it the United Who Knows This? Citizens, Citizens United ruling came down that said now that um, C4s may make endorsements. Yeah. We're only allowed to have 49% of our activities go directly to candidates, but we really don't need to have a political action committee. So we're going to stick with the C4 right now. If there's a need in the future, that's always a possibility. Would you voluntarily agree to release uh, where your sources of funding come from? Oh, where our sources of funding come from? I, ha I hadn't even given that any thought, but I'm, sh I'm sure that that's got to be made available, doesn't it? How's that work? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. But you could voluntarily. Agree. We could voluntarily do that, and you know what? We will certainly sit down and talk about that because that's not really been a consideration thus far. You know, we're we're just getting started with that. So yes. Do you think that um, the strategy you mentioned? There are different strategies in mm -hmm. the um, in the pro life movement. Do you think that this is a good strategy to start with the limited um, or the con the consent um, approach that the national right to life? Group. You know, that might be a good strategy on the federal level, just because of the situation there. I think they're the going state there. by state is what they're And then they're going to go back to the state as well. Well, you know what, there are a number of states right behind us that want to do the full, the full heartbeat bill, like we're doing it here in Ohio as well. So, you know, go for it. I mean, any state can go for anything they want to go for. Whatever they think they can get passed in their state to move us down the line, we're for it. We're for it. We just feel in Ohio, we have such a good makeup right now in the House and the Senate and with the governor's office, that, that we, would be, um, we would be remiss if we didn't go for the strongest language that we could. But you do think that, that is a, you would support that though? Oh, it's, it's absolutely valid. It's absolutely valid and it will certainly um, encourage women to 
to think more deeply and more concertedly before they make a decision, particularly if they can hear the baby's heartbeat. So that's a good thing. Good thing. Yes, I just wanted to add that uh, it was Congresswoman Michelle Bachman who said that her bill was inspired by our bill. When I first talked with their office, they agreed to, uh, to sign on and say, yes, we want to, to uh, protect uh, babies with beating hearts. Uh, she said that this is what this bill inspired them. They didn't believe they could go as far as we could in Ohio. Uh, what's great about it is there were, there were some memos being circulated to say that uh, this bill won't save any lives. Well, we know for a fact it already has, and it's because of that informed consent. Just by hearing, by you guys reporting accurately the stories of the beating heart and the, the youngest to ever testify, those, those clips got out, and uh, there was a baby who is, there is a baby who is alive now that would have otherwise been aborted had the news not been accurately reported, so we thank you for that. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's uh, a bill that, uh, that, that not only does Congresswoman Michelle Bachman support our heartbeat bill, but uh, so, does, uh, so does Governor Rick Perry, so does uh, Judge Roy Moore, so does Newt Gingrich, so does former Governor uh, uh, Mike Huckabee, as well as George Voynich, the list goes on. But uh, this bill is one, in fact, having been the one who passed informed consent back, I think we started in 89, it passed in 91, uh, we've already passed informed consent in Ohio. That's something that, that I work to do. Will this make it better? Yes. And what's great about this bill is that it actually, if, if there is a, uh, a temporary enjoyment of, of one enjoyment of some part of the legislation, we'll at least get informed consent. We'll at least get the reporting and we'll at least get the testing. So at a minimum, we're going to get uh, what they're shooting for in Congress. But at a maximum, we have a bill with a trigger clause that even on a better court ruling, we're going to see children protected.